Well, in 2000, he wasn't a neoconservative then. In a debate with Al Gore, it was the third and final presidential debate, they were debating foreign policy. And when asked whether or not he supported the use of military for humanitarian purposes, George Bush said that it's not our job to police the world. He instead argued that we should work closely with our allies and rely on them to handle those problems rather than us handling it directly in those other parts of the world. George Bush was taking a more defensive realist position. Um, he, he did favor a strong national defense even then, but argued we should mostly focus on our own defense rather than worrying about the rest of the world's problems. As you might expect, 9-11 changed all of that. But at first, Bush still sounded more or less like a realist, just a more interventionist realist. I remember him saying we should fight them over there so we don't have to fight them over here. I could do that in a funny accent, but I'll hold off on that. Okay, I'll do it. Let's fight them over there so we don't have to fight them over here. How was that? <laughs> anyway, um, so by saying that, he's basically saying that we have to fight them. They're going to fight us here whether we like it or not, so it's better we take them out over there. That's, that's still a realist position. But then he started making comments like, freedom is on the march. And let's not forget the name of the invasion of Iraq. It wasn't Operation Pacify the Iraqi Threat. It was called Operation Iraqi Freedom. You see, that right there is where he crossed the line and became a neoconservative. He wants to invade Iraq not necessarily to pacify a threat, though admittedly that was his main justification to Congress, but by calling it Operation Iraqi Freedom, he's saying we're going to invade them in order to spread freedom. That right there is the demarcation between a traditional conservative and a neoconservative, at least on foreign policy. The neoconservative believes we can change the world and spread freedom all over the place, whereas the traditional conservative will say that there are Plenty of people in the world who just don't want freedom as we understand it. Uh, Russia would probably be a very good example of that. And perhaps to some extent Iran, though I admit that one's a little more debatable. So in conclusion, I want to give you a litmus test you can use. Many in the southern states especially are neoconservatives and don't even realize it. Neoconservatism is really not part of who we are as Southerners. We have a long history of um, decentralization, states' rights, and pretty much wanting to mind our own business. But in the 2000s, the neoconservatives sold themselves to the South very effectively, and many Southerners became neoconservatives without even realizing it. So here's how you can tell. Ask them two very simple questions. Now, I admit this isn't perfect. But if you've only got a short period of time to talk to them, this is the best way to do it. Number one, do you consider yourself a conservative? Number two, do you support the war in Iraq? If the answers to both of those questions is yes, most likely you are speaking to a neoconservative. I don't think at this point you can make a realist defense of the invasion of Iraq. The argument about weapons of mass destruction, given the evidence we have now, is just utterly absurd. We found no evidence of any usable weapons of mass destruction. Yes, we know Saddam Hussein has used them before, long ago in the 1980s. So you know what we did about it? We bombed them. In 1989, 1990, we liberated Kuwait and we destroyed much of their military infrastructure. So in 2006, we find some decommissioned weapons left over from the Iraq-Iran War in the 1980s and that is the only evidence we have found that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. Well, decommissioned useless weapons that had been buried in the ground for over 15 years, I don't think that is a realist justification for an invasion, which leaves us only with the humanitarian argument. That's why I'm saying anyone who considers themselves a conservative and supports the invasion of Iraq either doesn't know what they're talking about or they are a neoconservative. Thank you for tuning in. I hope this has been informative.